Welcome to The Audible. On this week's season finale, we discuss breaking news from APSU women's basketball and high school football in the Montgomery County area. We'll also be taking a look at the NBA offseason so far and bringing you up to speed on the Titans. You're watching The Audible on APSU TV. I'm Dakota Stansfield. And I'm Blaine Keller. It's already started, as Montgomery County Mayor Jim Durrett has broken ground on the new convention center. APSU's very own Brianna Phillips has a story. All Montgomery County is excited for the new Preds Multipurpose Event Center. The groundbreaking was held November 12th, as many Preds fans could be seen rallied up for the exciting event. The facility ranges up to 250,000 square feet and is scheduled to open in 2022. Many representatives from the Nashville Predators and Montgomery County also joined us for the event, including Sean Henry, the CEO and President for the Predators, and also Jim Durrett, the Mayor of Montgomery County. Our Austin P Athletics and staff are also very excited to be able to use this facility. The facility is said to be able to host sporting events, concerts, banquets, conventions, trade shows and other events. Here is some action from the event. They have been instrumental in us building our fan base uh, very strongly to make this project happen. We're very excited to get involved in the community and uh, we're very excited for the community to get engaged with what we are doing in this facility and help this flourish. National Predators. There really hasn't been a lot of positive news that's come out of 2020. Grants for nonprofit organizations. The Ford Ice Centers have given away over $1 million in scholarships, equipment and programming and we built countless playgrounds and other events um, all over Middle Tennessee. Most recently, during uh, the tornadoes, our organization came together to volunteer, clean up, organize food, clothing, and supplies. All right, thank you, Danny. Now the facility will be mainly used by Austin Peay's men's and women's basketball team. Coaching offices will be moved to the facility as well as most of the training will be held here. Some more additions that are said to be in the facility are premium seating, private hospitality space, luxury suites, party rooms, and common areas that will have full access to the Arena Bowl. A special thank you to Blaine McIntosh for that voiceover on the package. Dakota, the MTech 30-year uh, lease for Austin P Basketball. Do you yeah. think this provides sort of an advantage either for the city itself when you talk about concerts and venues, things like that, but what about recruiting for Austin P men's and women's basketball? Yeah, I think, I think this convention is going to be huge. Like you said, not only just for concerts and everything else, but yeah, definitely, definitely for the basketball teams. It's going to allow for... Um, the team to be able to practice more often, um, not having to, um, I guess, sort of battle with classes and everything and the conflictions with that. But I think it'll be huge for recruitment. I think um, this will show um, players around the world um, in high school that we are a solid basketball team and, and that we're, we're pushing towards the future. And at the same time, you look at the MPEC for men's and women's basketball, this now allows the Dunn Center to be mm -hmm. used specifically for the volleyball team, which while it did not have its best year last year, had an NCAA tournament appearance two years ago. Yeah, definitely. While the MPEC will host both basketball teams beginning in 2022, both governor's squads start this season in the Dunn on November 25th. The women's team will be without three key players, however, as APSU Athletics has announced the indefinite suspension of guards Tahani Bennell, Casey Kidwell, and Ella Sawyer. While no official activity has been linked to the trio suspension, Kidwell was arrested and charged on November 16th with five, five counts of theft of property in the form of shoplifting. 
According to a Clarksville police report, the guard improperly scanned merchandise at a nearby Walmart that totaled $59.29. She was later released on a $5,000 bond, but Nell and Sawyer have not been linked to Kidwell's arrest. To kind of, when you think about this and the athletics department said that it wasn't athletics, you know, coronavirus related, mm. how much of an impact do you think this has on the women's basketball team as they travel to North Alabama to start this season? Oh, I think it's going to be huge. I think it's going to be huge. Like you said, these, these players are very key contributors to the team, especially to Hani. Um, so I think they're very much so going to be missed. When you look at the three players, two of them starters, Casey, a backup player, but definitely could have been a sixth man, sixth woman rotation player. Mm -hmm. Ellis Sawyer, huge for them last year, poured in 28 points against Murray State and really was a key contributor in their overtime loss to Belmont last year. Where do you go if you're the women's basketball team, you know, if not just for the opening game of the year, but for the first couple of weeks? That's, that's a great question. Um, I'm not honestly too sure, Blaine. I mean, obviously, they're going to have to start focusing on the uh, backups a lot more. And um, I really hope that, you know, this isn't as big as it seems. Um, I really hope that at least, at least the other two um, can be able to come back and play um, and that they're not caught up in this mess. You definitely hope to see all three players come back. When we return, we'll dive into the Northeast Clarksville playoff game and discuss the newly proposed TSSAA regions. You're watching The Audible on APSU TV. I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home. That's when I met Narnice. She started helping me a little bit like me. I don't know what you're doing, but your future is more important. She's my strength. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Score going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face scopes. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin. It was a hard-fought battle between two of Clarksville's best high school football teams last Saturday as Northeast beat Clarksville 17-15 to, to advance to the TSSAA 5A state quarterfinals. Blaine, this, it's been 10 years since any Clarksville team has played each other in the postseason. That, that's huge. Yeah, it's been uh, a long time, nearly a decade, as you mentioned. When you look at the last meeting between these two teams, it definitely did not look at, like it was going to bode well for the Wildcats. A 44-14 loss early on in the season for CHS against Northeast. But since that point, they had won four straight since the loss, uh, including a, a playoff win at Munford all the way out in Tipton County, a three and a half hour drive. Huge win for them to get them to this game. But ultimately, it wasn't enough. Yeah, well, like you mentioned, they played earlier this season and um, Northeast won 44-14. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that 
Um, that was kind of just like they were being kind of lazy that day, or what are your thoughts? Well, this team, when you look at the roster for Clarksville, there's a lot of sophomores and freshmen. It's not a very old team. They're not graduating very many guys. They had a huge class graduate last year. So when you talk to Isaac Shelby throughout this season, he really says that his team, you know, you say you watch a guy grow throughout the course of a season. This entire team grew over the course of a season and really came into their own near the end of the year. You look at some guys like Davin Geringer, a sophomore quarterback for them, definitely shined for the Wildcats. Jamar Carnell, a running back, also doing great things for them. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned a few guys. Um, for Northeast, who do you think was a deciding factor in this game, if you could name one? Well, you look at their offensive weapons, they are obviously loaded. You know, this team, while it is more of a basketball school at times, they definitely have athletes on the offensive and defensive ends. Yeah. Jawan Harris, I mean, a bowling ball of a running back. You're seeing him throughout the highlights here, definitely plows through defenders and has done that over the course of this season against every Montgomery County school that he's faced. Jaden Puig, the quarterback as well, also a, a really solid guy who can do things through the air and through his legs. Yeah, definitely. But there was a lot, like a lot of penalties called. I think one team had like four in the fourth quarter called on them. Um, do you think those penalties played any much of an impact during this game? You know, it comes down to discipline. And when you talk to Northeast head coach Brandon Clark, something that he's harped on this entire season is that penalties have hampered them. And whenever you look at it, like you mentioned, penalties kind of plagued them in the fourth quarter and allowed Clarksville to almost win this game in upset fashion. If you're going to next week at tomorrow at Henry County, a quarterfinal game, you cannot afford to do that again. Yeah, definitely. Now, Blaine, that, that last play of the game, 45 seconds left, um, they were fourth and six. Um, explain to me what happened there. Now, I mentioned Davin Geringer, sophomore quarterback for the Wildcats, but his youth definitely showed in that final play there. Uh, had an opportunity to pick up the first down with his legs, but threw it instead. Um, and when you throw it, you know, when you throw it on fourth down, you got a fourth and short and a chance to win the game. Obviously, you give up a chance for an interception there, but you don't expect a defensive tackle to get the, get the game-winning play. Gabriel yeah. Austin, another sophomore for the Eagles, coming up with a game-winning interception for Northeast. Yeah, that was an insane play. Um, now, you mentioned uh, Henry County. What's, what's up next for these guys, Blaine? Well, you know, you look at, we mentioned the 44-14 win for Northeast and Clarksville last, you know, the last time that they met. It was on the opposite end for Northeast the last time they met Henry County at home. 58 to nothing in a drenched game, very muddy, and very wet. Uh, you know that the circumstances might be a little different. There's more to play for tonight. Obviously, a region championship was on the line last time, but a semifinal yeah. appearance is on the line and the chance to maybe go to state for yeah. either team. With the season coming to a close for Clarksville Bay alongside all seven Montgomery County teams, We'll welcome new regional opponents for the 2021 season. Dakota, take us through what each team is really expecting whenever the calendar flips to 2021. You know, there's, there's going to be a lot, Blaine. Um, I got to say, um, which team do you think out of all these regions is going to be affected the most by this? Well, you look at all of these teams, and I mean, I think the one that is going to hurt the most, you look at West Creek out of region 7, 5A, or they might be in 6A now, I'm not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. But the Coyotes did not win a game in their region this year. One of their only wins was against a 3A school. And now, you know, they're going up against guys like Hendersonville, Gallatin, Beach, and Clarksville. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's really tough for them to be going over something like that. A difficult situation for them. But, you know, just take us through each team in each region. What, what are they looking at whenever you start the year? Yeah, so... Uh... Um, well, we got Montgomery Central getting moved to a new, how, how do you think that's going to affect them? Yeah, you know, they're in a nine-team region to start this year. They've got Pearl Cone, Tullahoma, Lawrence County, Marshall County, Montgomery Central, Creekwood, Glencliff, Greenbrier, and Hillwood. Mm -hmm. Now, Montgomery Central, the Indians are going to return their starting quarterback from last year. Uh, he's going to be a senior this year and is going to do maybe great things for them. Their offense was very, very difficult to define this year. They, they yeah. changed their offensive scheme three or four times throughout the year. Coach Tomlinson did, but now they're in a loaded region. Pro Cone, another team in a quarterfinal game starting tomorrow in Class 3A. Um, but you look at Glencliff, not a great school. Creekwood has been in region championships games each of the last two years. And Hillwood's got the number one pro style quarterback in the state of Tennessee. Yeah. This, this region could have been five teams and it would have still been as competitive as it will be with nine. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
do you think that that's going to be an issue having nine teams in this one region? Well, you know, you look at the other regions throughout the county, you know, 7-5A has got Henry County, Kenwood, Northeast, Northwest, Portland, Springfield. That's six. 5-6A has got six as well with three Clarksville schools and Beach, Gallatin, and Hendersonville. But that's almost another half of a amount of schools that you add in there. You're not yeah. going to get to play all of those guys. So, you know, at the end of the day, you hope that you end up with the Creek Woods, the Green Briars, the Glencliffs, and maybe even Lawrence County. But at the end of the day, Tullahoma is a playoff team. Pro Cone's a playoff team. Marshall County's a playoff team. There's not a lot of room for error. If you mess up in the first or second game, you're going you're gonna to run into some real trouble. Now, we look at Region 75A, as I mentioned, Henry County, Kenwood, Northeast, Northwest, Portland, and Springfield. Who do you think has the biggest advantage there? Obviously, we look at, we preview Northeast and Henry County this week. Do yeah. you think that brings a little more rivalry going into next year, knowing that they're going to definitely play each other when the calendar turns? Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned Kidwood in there. Don't, don't count Kidwood out. Kid, Kidwood has always been kind of a really decent team. But um, I, think, I think it is going to be very interesting um, to see Northeast coming back and end up playing those guys again. Another team, I mean, you look at this region, this is very identical to what they had four or five years ago. Uh, in this 7-5A region. Springfield dominant in 5-4A the last couple of years. Uh, state championship appearance two of the last three years. They're graduating a lot of guys this year and last year. Um, but this is still a powerhouse of a program. I think yeah. that's the matchup I'm most looking forward to outside of a Montgomery County school, Springfield and Henderson County, uh, Hen Henry County, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I'm a little biased. I'm from Springfield, so I think that the Jackets <laughs> should utterly run through this competition, but that's neither here nor there. 5-6A, <laughs> we've got Beach, Clarksville High School, Gallatin, Hendersonville, Rossview, and West Creek. And I mentioned West Creek, but an interesting uh, note to make about Gallatin and Rossview. Both yeah. teams have head coaches, Chad Watson, Todd Hood. Both were on the same sideline a couple of years ago at Clarksville Academy. Chad Watson was the defensive coordinator for the Cougars. Now head coach of the Green Wave, Todd Hood taking the Rossview job a couple of years ago. What do you think that reunion will be like? They haven't really met each other in a game since that moment. That's been four or five years from now. Do you think there's going to be some, some um, friendly rivalry going on there? Oh, yeah, definitely. No doubt. There will definitely be some rivalry going on. I'm, I'm very interested to see that game. I think it will be, yeah, it will be fun. I, I think that this, this region is going to be the most competitive out of all of them, if you ask me. All six teams have something to play for out, outside of West Creek. No, no offense to uh, the Coyotes there, but you look at Clarksville Academy's region, CA had a tough time this year. CA had a, a really, really, really tough uh, year. They had a couple of cancellations because of coronavirus. Their season ended against USGA. Their team, I mean, this used to be a program on the rise, and they're mm -hmm. struggling a lot now. What needs to happen for them to get back to relevance? I think what you just said, um, staying healthy, for sure, will definitely be one of the number one things. And um, they just got to get back into it. I think, I think all teams right now are kind of, with everything going on, is a little bit weird. So, yeah, I definitely think that would be well, a side factor. Sorry. As of right now, all the teams, remaining 60 teams left in the postseason. But when the calendar turns to 2021, everybody's zero and zero. Yeah, definitely. Um, but when we come back, we'll dive into the NBA offseason and catch up on the Titans. You're watching The Audible on APSU TV. Jason, let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare, so you can decorate it how you like. Dinner! Hello? Excellent. Soccer is soccer. Yeah, I saw you guys out there. Can't high five. 
All right. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and... Her. I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at the shelterpetproject.org. Welcome back to The Audible. The NBA draft was held on Wednesday, November 18th, and turned heads among fans of the association. Before that, trades were happening early and often prior to the first selection. Dakota, what were some of the key deals made thus far? Blaine, there was, there was a ton of key deals that have been made so far, a ton. Um, the first one, obviously, we have to mention is Chris Paul. Um, Chris Paul getting traded to the Suns. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean. Um, the Thunder got some good guys um, for it, and they got you know a few picks too for 2022. Um, but I think they got like Kelly Oubre and uh, some other guys. But I don't know. I feel like I feel like the Suns may have gave up a little too much for Chris Paul. CP3, an All Star last year, definitely led the Thunder to the success that they weren't necessarily anticipating. Uh, yeah. Whenever their season tipped off, Kelly Oubre, a great player last year, had he not gotten hurt, but. You know, CB3, obviously, the leadership that this Phoenix team needs to take it to the next level. Monty Williams, his coach, back when he was in New Orleans uh, with the Hornets, whenever yeah. he was first drafted. Uh, but you look at what Sam Presti's trying to do in Oklahoma City, compiling as many draft picks as you can. Yeah, definitely. And that's always a good move to go to. Drew Holiday getting traded as well. How do you feel about that one? Drew, you know, it's an interesting trade when you look at it at face value. You look at... George Hill and Eric Bledsoe is the two guards that are traded as part of the deal in return to New Orleans. I don't know if I agree with that necessarily. Drew Holiday is a very similar player to those two guys. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. He can create his own space easily, and he's a great playmaker, too. When we talk about the NBA draft, you know, happening last night, Anthony Edwards going number one overall. Oh, what are your thoughts it. on that? I love it. I love this. I love this. This is huge. This is huge for the Timberwolves because they needed a player like Anthony Edwards. I mean, they have D'Angelo Russell um, at point guard who can create his own space, create his own shot, um, a great playmaker as well. And then they have Cat who's just a beast in the paint. I mean, he's just unmatched. But they needed a solid person on the wing that could attack the basket solidly. And they got that out of him. Now, there's an interesting connection when looking at Anthony Edwards and Austin P. You wouldn't think it at face value, but Mike Peek and Ibrahim Jarju, two players who are newcomers this year. Peek played with Edwards last year at Georgia, while Jarju was at Holy Spirit Prep with him in high school. Now, we look at the second overall pick, James Wiseman, to the Warriors. Yes. We, yes. we hear about Clay Thompson getting hurt with the Achilles oh. tear today, but how do you think he helps them in the paint? Oh, greatly, greatly. That's what the Warriors needed. I mean, yeah, they got Draymond, but they still needed a solid person in the paint, and that's exactly what James Wiseman does. I mean, sitting at seven foot one, that's insane. And he just attacks the rim with just so much strength. Uh, that's exactly what they needed. And it really sucks that they lost Clay because I felt like they were going to be a pretty solid team this season just by adding him. Um, but yeah, that unfortunately happened. Now you look at the third ball brother going third as well. Yes. LeVar kind of not looking super pleased in that <laughs> video of his kid going to Charlotte. Do you think he's going to do great things with the Hornets? I think he will, especially just because of who the Hornets picked up as well in this draft. I mean, they were just making moves all over the place, which I was really excited to see because the Hornets haven't really always been the best of teams. Um, and so seeing them making a big splash in the draft like this was awesome. So I know uh, LeVar is probably not too excited about LaMelo going to the Hornets, but I think it's been a great start for his career. But um, it was a disappointing game for the Titans, and unfortunately I have to say that they were destroyed in the game against the Colts last Thursday. The Colts beat them 34-17. to Blaine, I don't even want to talk about this game. You, you just go ahead. Well, I mean, there, there are some bright spots, I would say. There are some interesting stories that you, you talk about when you look at last Thursday's game. Trevor Daniel, uh, an alumnus of Dixon County, you're 
your alma mater, yep. Um, yep. was driving a FedEx truck when he received the call from GM John Robinson that he wanted him on the team. Uh, oh, drove to the awesome. practice facility and worked out for him. He was on the practice squad last week and got elevated this week. Not a great game for him though. Special teams definitely doomed the Titans. Yeah, yeah, just everything really doomed the Titans. And it, it was sad because we started off so well. We really did. I mean, we were leading 7-0 and then um, we got a stop um, in the next drive. But <laughs> I guess in the second period, we just stopped playing because it just went straight downhill from there. I mean, the defense just wasn't there. We had one sack and our top tackle person um, had only 10 tackles. We had no interceptions. So our defense, I guess, just was not there. They just weren't playing today. Um, offense was not doing great either. Tannehill, I think, only had 147 yards. Um, what? <laughs> uh, Derrick Henry, I think he just had an off day. I, I can't give him too much hate. Um, he, he still did his thing, but um, definitely could have done a little bit better. Yeah, you know, it's definitely interesting that you talk about an off day for Derrick Henry being 103 rushing yards. You know, yeah. but, but it definitely <laughs> seemed that way. Uh, and you still talk about the special teams. Steven Goskowski is still an issue with the Titans. Brable wants him on the team, but do you? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. He, he keeps giving me false hope because, you know, he started out terrible. Started out terrible at the beginning of the season. Just could not hit anything. And then he started getting really good. He was hitting like 40, 50 yards. And so I was like, okay, cool. Like he's, he's stepping into his groove. But now he's just going back downhill. So. I don't know, I think we'll have to watch him in these next couple of games before I can decide that he needs to get booted. When you look at the upcoming game against the Ravens, definitely you wanted this win if you were Tennessee. Tougher matchup debatably with the Ravens next week. What are you looking for that? <sighs> well, first off, just stopping Lamar Jackson at all costs. I think he is going to completely obliterate our defense. I mean, if the Colts were able to do that to our defense, I'm not ready for what Lamar's gonna do to our defense. Um, but I think that's really just going to be making it slowing him down. The Ravens' defense is solid as well, but I think Derek, as long as he you know, doesn't have another off day and he comes to play, I think, I think he'll do his thing on the offensive side for sure. Now you talk about stopping Lamar Jackson both on the air and through the ground you know, <laughs> with his legs and with his arm, but at the same time, they've got a slew of running backs. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Edward, or Mark, Gus Edwards, I should say, Mark mm -hmm. Ingram, Mark Ingram yeah. uh, and then J.K. Dobbins as well. What do you think about that trio of backs that they have? That's just unfair. I mean, to have a quarterback who is so mobile, but also having a running back in Mark Ingram who is just unstoppable as well. I mean, like I said, our defense is just going to get obliterated. How do you think? How do you think they could help out? I mean, Desmond King, a new trade piece from last year, mm -hmm. or not from last year, a couple weeks ago. How do you think Desmond is helping out this team, and how he might be able to acclimate himself this week against these guys? Yeah, I, th I think he's going to play a great deal for sure. Uh, whenever you look at, that's all the time we have for today. Sorry, that. Thank you for tuning in uh, for this season. This has been the Audible, brought to you by APSU TV.